Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well. So today I am trying something I haven't done in years, which is following a commercial pattern. And this one is actually a vintage pattern, which I picked up recently. It was six pounds in a vintage shop, and I feel like you can pick these sort of things up in charity shops and all over the place. Um, so I'm very excited to try this out. This is what the front part of the pattern looks like. So it's a super retro design, and I'm gonna be going for this one here these two are the same and that one's just got straight sleeves at the back so yeah we'll see how this goes i think the last time i followed a commercial pattern was in sixth form and even then i altered the pattern um so it's been a good chunk of years since i've done anything with a normal pattern so yesterday i opened out the pattern just to see what sort of state it was in in case it was not actually usable because obviously with a vintage pattern that's been opened you don't know what someone has done with that pattern already um, but it was actually in really good shape and she hadn't cut or he hadn't cut anything that was needed off thank goodness can't say the same for me though because i then decided to shorten the pattern because it was pretty long it ended up going below my knee when i held it up to my body so i wanted a mini dress and so I just chopped off about, I measured 12 centimeters down from the chopping line. Um, and yeah, so I chopped that off. So this is the fabric duo I'm gonna be using. I picked these up in the sale in a quilting shop. So they would originally have been a lot more expensive, um, but I managed to get them nice and cheap. So yeah, we'll see how this turns out. I'm using the darker one for the dress part and the lighter one for the top section collar and sleeves and then i also have this giant peachy rickrack that i've had for ages and i remember seeing it and just having having to get it um but i've never had a reason to use it yet or anything that actually went with it <laughs> so i'm going to use this around the neckline um sewn into the neckline there and i might use it at the cuff um as sort of like a little detailing at the end so see how that goes. I'm going to now show you everything I filmed yesterday. I filmed ironing the pattern flat um, and then cutting everything out so I'll play that now and then we can carry on and make the dress. <laughs> So I've just been working on the back of the dress because that is what it told me to do first in the instructions. And so I've put an invisible zip in the back. Um, let me show you how far I've got so far. I've also had to close the blind because it is just so sunny outside that it just completely blinds me because it bounces off this white table. So this is the back piece that I've just sewn together. I've managed to match 
this bit with the zip in it which I'm very proud of <laughs> so that's what it looks on the inside there's actually a two centimeter seam allowance which is mad um, so I had to chop a lot off when I overlocked it so yeah the zip is in and the next thing I need to do is attach the side panels at the back just throwing the back on the mannequin to get it out of the way um, so that's finished now and let's move on to the front which is the bit I am super excited about I can't wait to see what it looks like with this front insert so this piece was cut on the fold as was the front center piece so I'm going to go and iron both of these first to get rid of the crease down the middle so this potentially is quite a tricky part to sew because you have to make the curve look nice and smooth. Um, so don't use a super long stitch. I'm using two and a half on my machine. So I basically need to fit this front bit to the bodice. And there are some notches in places. I might start by just matching one of these notches up and just see how it goes. <laughs> Probably gonna have to unstitch some of this, but we'll see. Right, where's that notch gone? So that didn't go too badly. I do have a bit of extra fabric up here, which isn't the end of the world. I could just work with it. Um, obviously it will sit flat once I've overlocked it and pressed it down. I'm gonna try it up against my body, see if it looks even. That went kind of okay, actually. I'm happy with that. There's just one bit here that I might stitch. Sometimes with those scary bits of sewing, you just have to sort of go for it and hope for the best. <laughs> I've now got the finished front, I just went and sewed the sides on. Um, so that is what that's looking like. And now I'm going to take the front and the back, basically put them like this, and sew the top seam and down the side. <laughs> Sides have been sewn together and now I'm going to quickly hem the bottom of the dress. I'm going to do a double rolled hem. Not a hugely big one, just quite a neat little one. Just hung up the dress for a second and I'm now trying to figure out the collar. I was just looking at the way they attach it and it seems pretty normal. So I'm going to put my rick rack around first and then sew this in half the other way so I get the edges down here and then I pin a long neckline sew along there and then fold under the other one and stitch it on inside and it looks like they've added another trim at the top afterwards um, so that would just be stitched on at the top somehow maybe by hand as well sewn on 
And now I'm going to go around the inside and hand stitch this seam flat here. is now finished I just went and stitched this top bit of rick back on on the machine because I absolutely hate hand stitching <laughs> so the final thing to work on is the sleeves and I have a feeling these might take a while <laughs> this sleeve part will be fine it's just the cuff that can get a bit fiddly um, so I'm going to figure that out um, I have looked at their instructions for the cuff and they just don't seem like they seem okay but they don't seem like a usual cuff would be i just tried constructing one of the sleeves and it was a little confusing because the cuff is so different to any i've made before i had to take it off to explain it so basically this join here is really tricky because you have to just slit down the fabric and put it each side if that makes sense and usually a cuff goes has a placket here and then folds over onto the other side but this one folds under so you put the buttons under there and you put this on the top and to be fair it does look very neat when it's on and um, like you don't have any holes here or anything so it does look really nice and yeah but it just threw me a bit because I've never had to make a cuff like this before um, but yeah, first time for everything. This is why I wanted to make a vintage pattern because I wanted to see how different everything was. Um, and yeah, I'm learning new things. So I'm gonna get on and make the next one. So the first thing I did was to get my interfaced piece of cuff. This is just to make the cuff a bit stiffer than the rest of the fabric. And then I sandwich on top the inside lining of that cuff. And then I put the pattern piece back on to find my notch. Um, so here is the notch here. So you need to make sure you cut all the way down that seam allowance um, so that it fits on top. So I sew along here, down, along and back up. And that bit here is all left open to fit onto the sleeve. Just sewing the bits I was talking about. And now I'm just chopping off corners that I need to fold when they turn it through. That just leaves the edges with less bulk so you get a nice point at the end. So let me just turn this through and we can go and iron this. I apologize for all the noise going on outside. There's literally constant roadworks at the moment. This is the bit I hate. It's so fiddly putting this onto this. So you have to turn this inside out. And find the notch. So there's a notch. And place this on here. And then I just start pinning down the cuff onto the sleeve. I don't usually pin, but I definitely do for this. <laughs> it really needs it. And then I'm gonna wrap it around and pin it here as well. Actually, it needs to go about here. So yeah, I'm gonna wrap it around and pin that into place as well. And then you can manipulate the gathers in the sleeve. It's just one of those ones you have to just hope for the best and <laughs> see how it turns out and then know that you might have to unstitch it.
So I've just sewn that on the inside and now I'm going to turn it all the right way around. And this is where ironing the um, cuff first comes in handy. <laughs> um, okay, I then need to make a big slit down here. And then the cuff just goes on top of the gathers and you tuck all of this in. Nearly finished with the sleeves. I have to attach them onto the bodice, do the buttonholes and then attach the buttons and we are done. So they have notches on the front and notches on the back. So back notches are often double notches. Um, so two little notches and then the front is shown with just one notch and then they have a notch at the top shoulder seam as well and I'm just going to do what I usually do which is hold the sleeve in the seam and flip the main bodice over and then I'm just going to start pinning matching up the notches and everything in here sleeves are now both inserted and overlocked inside so now it tells me to add a shoulder pad and so I'm going to make my little version of a shoulder pad <laughs> which is much easier and looks less strange than a big old shoulder pad so I take this Taylor's wadding stuff I don't actually know the real name for this and I'm going to make some little shoulder pads by just cutting some of this foam, folding it in half. And then with any scrap pieces of fabric I have, I'm just going to fold these in half. And then I go and overlock a curve around here. So I'll just quickly overlock these. So here are the two little shoulder pads. And I'm now gonna go and stitch these in the top where the gathering is. They just sit in there and then when it's on your shoulder it makes it puff up a bit more. So inside you just put it along here and I usually zigzag it in but you could just straight stitch it in. So the sleeves are in and now I need to go and put the buttonholes on. So I've already marked those out I think. Um, but first, before I do that, I need to decide which button to use. I have a feeling I bought some really nice brown buttons recently. But if I can find them, that is another question. Yay, I found them. Okay, so these are the buttons that I have. They're super cute. They're like wooden effect buttons so obviously this isn't where they're going but that's just an idea so yay I'm gonna go and sew the buttonholes now and then I'll come back buttonholes are done I'm just gonna use a Stanley knife to cut open the holes because I just find that's the easiest and neatest thing The dress is finished. Buttons are on and it's all done. I'm going to try it on tomorrow because I'm currently sweating a lot. <laughs> so hot outside and now it's getting kind of hot in here. But yeah, that is how it turned out. I'm very happy with it. I need to give it a good steam tomorrow and then we can try it on. It's now the next day. I thought I would try on the dress for you. Show you how it turned out. Overall, I'm really happy with it. The only thing that I wish I maybe would have twirled is how 
long the shoulders are because it kind of hits, it should hit a bit closer in on me um, because this is a bit too wide for me. Um, but that's fine, I mean it's nice and relaxed. And if I ever want to make it again, I can just twirl it to be a bit smaller. But I'm glad that it wasn't too small. I'm absolutely obsessed with how the cuffs turned out. I really like this technique. I'm not sure um, if it's still the best technique to use. Let me show you the dress in the mirror. I like the length that I went for in the end, not too short. I really love the rickrack detailing on the collar, I'm so glad I did that. This is what the back looks like. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. I've styled it with my long mango boots and I love that look. I also brought down my very 70s sunglasses go with it. I'm going to go out and take some pictures of this dress now. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want me to do more like this where I follow someone else's pattern. Um, and yeah, I shall see you guys all in my next video. Bye!